doing at home? We'll find out a lot today about a few people, very special people here at Blast, as we've got a couple of special guests this evening. Last night we did Skybox. This time we'll be talking to the CEO, COO excuse me, of NIP, Jonas Gunderson. I think I nailed that, as Killed well that. as twists after a very difficult loss. Stay tuned to Blast Overtime. Is that the open? I think we're, okay. Production. I thought we were supposed to go cold up. Hi guys, we're in blast overtime. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're all, uh, we're all here <laughs> sipping uh, cranberry juice. This is myself, Connor. We sent Anders home yesterday, uh, or, or today, because he had casted the match a little bit earlier. We move in today. Uh, we have just casted a match with our, our good friend Twist right here after a very tough loss. He's being a consummate professional after the loss hanging out with fans, taking pictures, twists. What's going on on the inside right now? On the inside? I mean, not much. Like, kind of, that game's kind of for nothing, in our opinion. So we're just going to have a, a longer day tomorrow, mm -hmm. and that doesn't really matter. When you put, on the, you put on the tough attitude, does it help with the losses when you move into tomorrow? Is it, is it more of a front? Is it something that you have to tell yourself to make yourself feel better? Is it as hard as it looks? Losing? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it used to be. But I mean, realistically, it's like it's not like we're out. So yeah, that's true. And yeah. I mean, I could just instantly take pictures with fans afterwards. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. Yeah. And there's yeah. lots of things around me to cheer me up. So yeah, yeah. It's a good attitude to have. Yeah, it's a good mantra. Yeah. I feel yeah. like uh, you know, uh, no offense, man, but I kind of felt like you know, hearing your response now to that answer, I almost feel like I felt that attitude during map two. There was times in that map where I felt like you guys were already kind of over it. You feel that way? Um, that's kind of how some of our mentalities were. Yeah. Yeah, we're just very aggravated, like six, seven rounds in. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I feel like we just ha did a poor job of mentally resetting after map one. So part of the reason we have you on, though, is to talk about some things that did, went, that did go OK. We've got a round that we can pull up um, that we'll look at from early on in the match, okay. where uh, we, can, we want you to talk us through the strategy that went down. Um, here it is, the uh, sixth round on Inferno. And do you remember like what happened here? I want you to basically talk about what potentially the comms were as well as like what the setup could have been as you move into this round. Okay. Hmm. I mean, right now we're just defaulting heavy mid. Uh, Jake is usually never boiler or window, but he gets spammed, spamming back. Uh, our plan was to take mid early. And... Hmm. Yeah, we're missing the uh, the mini map, obviously, for this. Yeah, I can't really see where uh, my team is. This does eventually around. turn into an A hit. Uh, you were going into halls quite often. Phase did come into halls a little bit later on, and then caused some problems for you. What was the idea behind going A so often? I mean, to be honest, I don't, I don't really feel like we're really calling to read the opponent. We're just calling whatever we feel comfortable with, mm -hmm. and that's not like us. So, I mean, it. I'm in halls pretty often, so it's nothing really new for me there. Yeah. To be honest, FaZe made it pretty like obvious when they were in halls. Like the run round that I killed cold, uh, they didn't throw anything, and they were throwing things the entire half. Mm -hmm. So it's just a mistake on their part, just being a little too obvious. And what can you do with that information? Like if you have halls, it doesn't necessarily mean you can take A. So what's the difference between like having halls control and knowing you can take A versus like when you need to rock it back like this? Like go towards B because we don't have mid. Yeah. I mean, I even called that I felt like there were majority halls. And I mean, we're, our plan was still take mid, so that's what we tried. But I feel like we could have went and wrap. There was multiple times in the half that we could have wrapped. And I don't think going back view is like the worst call, but we definitely didn't capitalize on the information that was given. Yeah, some of the, some of the rounds came down to the wire like in your rotations, um, but it seemed like you had a lot of information. So it's hard to say exactly what went wrong. Obviously, we're about to follow up here with a couple of really good kills from Twist. Um, to close this out, but the round is kind of won already at this point, right? Yeah, it's a very hard retake for them. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a 4v3 retake. It was? Yeah. 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 I mean, even at that point, they have, having no one banana is very difficult for them. And I heard all the opponent's CT, so NAF could still prepare mm -hmm. for uh, the retake to commence. So it looked like, like uh, not to keep it too serious, but it looked like on Inferno, you like a lot of the times you guys would get top mid control, you'd get top banana after fighting really, really hard for it, and then you basically had free reign. You could pick an option, which site is is the better site to take. Now you couldn't see it, but from what we saw, 
Phase were rotating really well, and it felt like they were rotating with not much information. Were you expecting to see as many people on the sites that you were hitting? Uh, I think we got into our own heads right away because we just assumed from their recent matches that Cold was a B player. And even though he was B, like, I think one time, uh, we saw a majority at A, but we always thought that they might have been 3 being. Oh, uh, okay. So it was very unsure because Nico was killing people at B, mm -hmm. and we originally he was not a B player. Were there moments where it's like the, the calls could have been a bit faster as to where you hit a site? Like there, was, there was gaps that, again, stuff that we could see uh, that you couldn't yeah. see, where it's like if you went a little bit sooner to a site, then you could have definitely like maybe won the round or just had an easier time. Like there's one where Nico come, broke, he's sitting on top of or second oranges. He spams down one and then Nico uh, flashes through a smoke after rotating early and then comes in and helps out. And that round wouldn't have been possible if you guys had gone to be a little bit sooner. Did you feel like you were kind of a step behind every, uh, every round? We were definitely moving slowly. Even when uh, we did take mid control early on, we gave it up and that's not like us. We mm -hmm. were definitely not practicing to do that. Um, we weren't capitalizing on the B control that was given. Or I feel like our explodes or executes were kind of off. Or we could have had better flashes, better timings. But yeah, I feel like uh, it doesn't really matter what the enemy team's setup is. As long as we have like a good hit, that's kind of all that matters. And we didn't have good hits the entire half. Based, based on their setups, do you feel like you guys got red tonight? Because there was times, even on Dust 2, not just you know, focusing on Inferno, where I feel like even just coming off of pauses, particularly like Dust 2, right off the pause, end of the half, you guys hit B site out of nowhere, and they always had that three stack. And I feel like that was coming you know, from them over and over. It was constantly having numbers on sites. Do you guys feel that during the match? Oh yeah, they definitely had reads. I mean, yeah. we were giving them obvious tells. Like, uh, there was a mid that we, around that we rushed mid fast and then instantly gave it up, and then we smoked off like library, that whole area there, and then we did nothing with it. So immediately, you know, they have all the info, mm -hmm. and Rain was sitting in a lane smoke, and he had all the info that we're going back B. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah, very difficult, one. and they, they had good reads the entire half. Also on the pistol, there was around the, the second half on the pistol, we talked about how you guys love to run down mid. Like, you guys love to barge down mid, and it seems like even though everybody knows you do it, you still do it, and you oftentimes get away from it or get away with it. Here, you go for a kind of... Like a passive setup. Yeah, very yeah. passive setup. You're the guy who's in Graveyard. <laughs> we were talking about this yesterday. You know, a lot of times you guys are running down mid. This time, you're the guy in Graveyard getting wrapped on. Is there a reason that you guys had such a passive CT pistol setup? Uh, I think our first half definitely played into that factor, just being passive instantly. Mm. Um, we had some weird setup that was called originally, a bunch of audibles. Someone's going to start Balak, decide not to start Balak. Mini graveyard, in my opinion, very trash setup. Yeah. To deal with any pistol, to be honest. Yeah. Um, Nick had a small mistake where he just smoked himself out, even though no one knew he was there, mm -hmm. and no Molly was being thrown at him, so yeah, he gave away right. his spot. And then I was graveyard, second I'm spotted, I'm kind of just useless, especially if they're splitting A. Yeah. And yeah, I'm yeah, feeling like the retake attempt. Yeah. I feel so like it's a very bad setup. Yeah, so I mean, looking towards tomorrow, there's still obviously more chances. Are you worried at all about tomorrow? No, because we're gonna, not going to do what you're going to go back and uh, hang out with the guys and talk things over and then not do this again. What's the deal? Are you going to play the same maps? Is anything going to change? Uh, I don't think we know what the videos will be. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I had assume, I'd probably think they'd pick Overpass. Yeah. Just based off our statistics. Right. But I don't think that they're really comfortable with anything. To right, be right. Honest. Yeah, but feeling comfortable, right? We feeling didn't. confident. Oh, yeah, say. we're feeling comfortable. Yeah. Okay, good, yeah. good, good. All right, well, well thanks for having you on. Uh, I appreciate that so much, especially after coming in on such a tough loss. It's so good, I think, for viewers to be able to unpack some of those losses, get a second opinion or, or take on what happened, even though they got to, to, to watch it live. We don't get the comms, and that's such a big part of Counter Strike, so I appreciate that so much. Thank Cheers you so much, Swiss. Okay. This bump. All right, now we're going to. Take a look at the uh, CS Money skin loadouts yeah. for a, a couple of people. This show is obviously brought to you and powered by CS Money. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at this. Connor, this is something that yeah. you love to talk I'm, about. I, you're just a skin guy. You're I such kinda, a you're, you're yeah, grubby yeah. skin guy. I mean, you're the fashionista, uh -huh. but when it comes to in-game, you know, I'm the one who I like to, you know, we'll yeah, spend I guess, a little money. I guess clothes, they, uh, they, they, uh, they get wrinkled, but skins last forever, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, not, yeah. Sorry, not real skin, but skins in game do, right. absolutely. Yeah, but skins in game, yeah. Um. Yeah, Ooh. I quite enjoyed that, yeah. Right, I was excited for I thought there would be a follow-up. I, I mean, you know, I was just introduced to this segment, Mohan. We were talking skins. I was like, hey, 
Let me in on this one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to show off my Lota. I'm hoping that's going to be a part of the show at that some point. That can be, you know, if we uh, bring you on as a recurring man. guest, then potentially we oh. can have your loadout appear. It means I've got to do a good job tonight, I suppose. I suppose, yeah, you've got to right. bring this one home. Do we know what we're bringing up? Whose skins we're bringing up? That, uh, we will have a, a couple of loadouts. I think Stewie is one of them. Nice. Stewie, Stewie's got a nice one. So Stewie, I believe it's Stewie and Nafla. They both work with I love like... how he already knows what, <laughs> what skins they They, they rock with the, uh, you know, they go like like all red. You know, that's a common theme. Some people, they want they want certain certain skins to match, you know, which ones are most important. You see the obvious combinations here, right? The Crimson Kimonos. I believe Device was the first pro player that really started rocking these when, mm -hmm. when, when gloves came out. Right. Um, these are speezy. So like, you know, this is, this is, this is some tournament winnings on the line. Couples very nice, nicely with a Doppler, full ruby, but a butterfly Doppler. Now that's like to me, that's like the ADD knife. You okay. know, he's always spinning it. Well, he's you know, showing Stewie, it off. right? He's always yeah. shaking his mouse, like him right. moving it up and down whenever he's holding angles. Yeah. So right there, I mean, the most important combination. If you're going to be a gloves guy, then you got to be a knife guy. Okay. Because the gloves go with the knife. Right. Right. Sure. I'm loving the enthusiasm, by the way. Gloves all the time. Yeah. I feel like it's the most you've ever gotten out of me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so so if you're going to rock gloves, then you got to have a nice knife. Now you know either you're going with like a very neutral type of glove, and then a, a vanilla skin can work nicely. But this is, I mean, this is all red. You know, this is all red and it's flashy, so you give true. props to that. Yeah, it comes out fiery hot, just like he did on Dust 2, even though they ended up Darn not clinching yeah. it. Thank but now we'll take that. a look at another loadout. Before we pull up that graphic, it, it's, doesn't matter. his name is Taco. Do you have any idea what kind of skins he has? Taco? Oh, I do now. If you rack from See, memory. So oh, I think, okay, I think this is a good example of somebody who goes a bit more uh, a bit more neutral in their colors, right? It's not yeah. flashy ruby red. He goes with the, with the charred bloodhound. Now, what's nice about the bloodhounds is obviously you see that trim on the back of the glove, those little studs and that, that Bloodhound skull. Uh -huh. Well, the different types of the different versions of the bloodhounds have different yeah. colors, but he went with the neutral gray, and that goes nice with like again neutral skins. You look at Fire Serpent. It's a standard AK with just like a, a hand painting imposed on it. Personally, I play the Predator. You know, it's like that green and brown camouflage. Yeah. Again, hand painted colors. So that one's matching. But he does have a bit of flair in this because he drops another Doppler. Right. So you could have gone with a vanilla skin, classic silver. You know, like hot off the press. Mm -hmm. But again, these guys like to flex, so he drops that hot Doppler. I, I don't know if, if that's the actual phase he has. Because remember, Doppler skins, you know, oh multiple my God. phases. Yes, the, it's the, a whole spectrum. The ruby is a full, a full version of it. Yeah. The rarest of rare. Um, but I like this. Again, the Howl, that's, I feel like that's in popular M4 just because it's super expensive. Yeah, you've got the gold You also writing. got like Poseidons up there. Right. That's another good one. Um, I hope moving forward with our CS Money shot styles that we get more than just the main four. I mean, these ones are important because obviously you're always buying AK, you're always buying M4, but some guys like to get fancy, you know, like I'm a big FAMAS player. Mm -hmm. What's his scout look like? That's you know, P250, Deagle, hello. Yeah. These are questions we need answers to. I, I'll tell you, I'm immediately curious. So uh, between the two of them, who do you give the edge to? Because uh, you know what? Tacos more my style. You like tacos regards. more? Yeah. I think the fiery red. I mean, it might be because like uh, I played with Stewie in the past. Maybe I'm a little right. bit biased, but uh, you look good in red. Yeah, that's true. So. Yeah, even though red's not my favorite color, I look good in it. But that's the end of the CS Money segment. We are now bringing in our very special guest. Super excited to be on the COO of NIP, the new CEO of NIP. Well, relatively new in the relatively last few new. years. Yeah, I know. Yes, the second half, I should say. <laughs> uh, uh, Jonas Gunderson. Yeah. Or should I call you Calc? Uh, yeah, my playing career wasn't great enough to go by that nickname. <laughs> really? Think, yeah. No, but I mean, you do have some big names that you've, you've, you've been on the rosters on. Yeah, you're but just I, a social engineer? So, yeah, that's what I heard, right? That's, <laughs> apparently. Uh, I played for some of the big teams, yeah. But this was early days when it was uh, pro gaming, right? It was, uh, our salaries were not even enough to buy food, I think, for the month, yeah. right? But it was Still the first sharing hotel yeah. rooms. Like. Yeah, so stuff right. like that. Mom's basement, all that stuff. Right, right, right. So that's a different kind of programming than it is now, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you are, you are the CEO of NIP, the CEO of a roster that has just won a series on land versus MIBR yeah. after looking very decent yesterday. Not NIP. NIP did not look decent yesterday, no. but MIBR did. So this is a pretty big scalp. Are you proud? Yeah, I think it's awesome, like for the team. Obviously yesterday was, uh, like it's so new, right? I come in, so big shoes to fill with the legacy that NIP has, tons of respect for the old uh, rosters and coaches, right? Yeah. Uh, and we have to reinvent ourselves and we get like a month, right? And Tim comes in and, 
Björn comes in to coach, and we have to bond immediately. It's all so I think it's very normal, like for the first map. It's, it's a young lineup also, right? We're investing in the future. So even though it, it didn't look great yesterday, it looked uh -huh. like we didn't show up. But I think it's so normal. Yeah. I just I think seeing them today was just it was so different, right? They picked it up, great plays, and just like great teamwork, yeah. good synergy. And uh, Jonas is not just uh, he's not he's not an investor in NIP. He's a CEO. But he was very invested in NIP. <laughs> and we can go ahead and take a look at a little highlight replay package of his reactions to yeah. NLP, NLP playing. Do you have a little bit of Italian in the blood? There, I don't Jonas? know, man. It's, it, it's, when, we, when we're not playing, I can do the whole uh, structure side, you know, running business and all this stuff. But when we're playing, I can't deal with it. It's, just, <laughs> it's too much, man. Yeah, it's a bit too I get much. so invested into it. And I think also the, sometimes when you play it yourself, uh, like many people here know, right? Yeah. It's so frustrating to be on the sidelines because you sort of want to go there, but even though you die, it's still it's you in there. So it's it's. it's just Your hands much. aren't on the mouse and keyboard, but you're still very much in the. Yeah, so, and the excitement, right? right? And I love it, right? I'm a Counter Strike fan. Yeah, of like course, the rest we all of us, are, right? It's yeah. awesome, right? So uh, yeah, I just can't help myself. Yeah, it's you ever want to uh, own a team, Connor? Is Me? That ever, yeah, is yeah that ever I, I told you the other day, man. If I win the lottery, uh -huh. right? Or if this this if this oh, really works. Who's the roster you're buying? Oh, this is very that's expensive. A big question. Are you going to start a new roster? No, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create what we've always needed, which okay. is an all Canadian super team. Okay. So I'm just going to basically Daps. kick half of Liquid. <laughs> okay, um, great. Make that a full unbanned team. Unbanned Steel. Unbanned Steel. Oh, Bring him in. I like that. And who knows where that one goes? Okay. So we have Adapts. Is he on there? Maybe. I mean, you got a list of roster. I can't let them know who's on the team before I make it. Oh, that's true. Then they're going to get like, secret, too excited man. and then you're going to have to fight with them on rates. I got a question for you. The other day, I asked uh, Plopsky, we caught him just during media day, um, very quickly. Like, he didn't really have a good, a good chance to answer it. But I, I said to him, like, now with everybody from the old lineup, the legendary NIP players gone, right. like, is this the beginning of a new era of NIP? And I think as a player who has to pl pay respects to the players that came before him, it's hard for him to answer that on the spot. Sure. So I ask you instead, like, now, now that it's started, very recently, obviously, with these last changes, with threat coming back and whatnot, is that kind of like in the back of your mind, the feeling? Is that the vibe with this? Like, is this the restart? And we know what you're paid to say, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As you can see on my emotions, I, I don't know how to hide stuff. Right? So <laughs> no. it's a, no, I think um, an era is earned, right? Uh, I'd like to say that it's a, a beginning of a new era, but that's really hard until we start winning something. And uh, even though it looks like we won a final on me, right? It's just our first match in <laughs> lower bracket, not getting knocked out. But you know. Uh, I, I think it's an incredibly promising start to the new lineup, right? As I said, we, we've had a, a very short time to prepare, but it's been great. Like, everyone's building great synergy. And the way I see it is just, like, I focus around the process uh, on building the team and the performance, right? Building good support, good infrastructure, giving them the time that they need to really invest in themselves and the lineup, and then... I hope it turns into an era, right? Or am I, am I, I feel like myself, I guess. Yeah. There's I a lot to unpack here. But what, maybe the most interesting question would be like, what's something that you wish people knew about what your job is? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know. Haven't given that any thought? Yeah, no, I don't know. You do a lot, right? It's people management. I can say that. The primary part of it is just people management and mm -hmm. uh, getting everyone aligned around the same vision and running in the same direction, right? So obviously you do a lot of stuff on rosters, working with the coaches on what to do there, but essentially it's one mission for me, right? It's like right. saying we run the same direction, we're on, we're on the same battlefield, running in the same, yeah, towards the same goal. I think that's what I do. And how you do that, who knows, right? Yeah, we're all <laughs> figuring it out as we yeah. go, right? When we were on the couch earlier, you were talking about the future of NIP, and just in a more nebulous sense, what can you tell us about the future of NIP? Well, what are the plans? Like, how do you, how do you separate yourself from the pack in this day and age? Yeah. That, that's a, I'd like to win a tournament again. That would be ideal, right? <laughs> it's been two years, two years so I'll yeah. take one of those. Yeah. It um, yeah, it's been two years. Let's not get into it. It sure. feels like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. We want a match today. It's hey, great, right? Stick you yeah. with that yeah. one, man. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it, you, a rebuilding phase, a modernization phase. I think that uh, it, you asked about separate from the pack. I think that's a great question, right? I could talk about the mental coaches we have, but at this point, everyone does it, right? So mm -hmm. I just don't talk about it. We, we do have them. But uh, I think... It's trusting and longevity for me, how to separate from the pack, not getting uh, too caught up in trends, what's popular right now. Like we look at Astralis, they're doing it the right way, clearly the best team in the world, but thinking a bit more ahead and just focusing on our own strengths, mm -hmm. our own team, and then hoping that turns into the meta someday, right? Yes. Instead of just, I think I base it much more around just us becoming a really strong unit with all our divisions, not only Counter-Strike, but just 
Well, I was a, I was a big doubter of you guys yesterday, uh, or even when earlier today. I really didn't think you were going to win this match. No, I'll have to cheers you, sir. Well, thank okay. you. <laughs> so sorry about that. You have my vote of confidence from now on. Unless it's versus uh, Liquid, obviously, because I'm from North America. But <laughs> okay, so that's you like so uh, less than 24 hours of happy confidence. Thanks. But, but thank you so much for, for coming on, Jonas. I hope we'll spend more time together, talk sure. more about the future of NIP. That is uh, Jonas Gunderson, ladies and gentlemen, CEO of N uh, NIP. Um, and that is the end of the show. We will definitely make this a consistent thing. Be back tomorrow with another maybe set of interviews, talk with players about what they want to talk about. And it's up to you to influence that. If you have some suggestions or feedback or anything like that, go ahead and send us a tweet. And uh, that is me, Launders, and Connor and Jonas signing off from Blast Overtime. You guys have a good night.